Yeah, I didn't want to say that. Nick's no longer here, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, welcome to the Locker Room Talk Show. And we are here with the godfather of Locker Room Sports, Don Raimundo. Hi, Don. Glad of you to... Uh, So, yeah, so I uh, I I reckon that uh, pack rim sports is it all started everything all starts with the recreation you know all those pickup games, those weekend warriors I feel you because I also had the same group back in the motherland called the the Dutch Marines group where we play every Sunday and then uh-huh. all the group grew until we recruit some PBA players to play for us. And I'm sure that organic growth is the same way with you. So, uh, you know, if you can tell us, maybe you and Noel can tell us the story of how Pacrim grew from the very beginning. Yeah, so I think by now, you know, you guys know Dick Padron. That's where we mm-hmm. all started, uh, Filipino League in Eagle Rock, uh, uh, L.A., And we used to play in the league, like Noel and, you know, and uh, Rick Santos. So we all played in that league together. And we just felt like um, we had to go on our own because, you know, uh, it wasn't, you know, as organized as we wanted it to be. Mm-hmm. So we decided as friends just to start our own league in Montebello. Like that was 1991. So that was a long time ago. Yeah, from becoming a uh, bunch of friends playing together, then people heard about us, I guess, and they start coming and joining, and we end up um, growing, expanding. So uh, we end up, I know, but then we just end up being a business for me, you know, so I end up more gyms, more referees, more teams. So we grew from Filipino to Asian to Open, from five, ten and under to six and under. So, you know, we just yeah. tried to accommodate as many people as uh, we could to play basketball. Yeah. When you guys started, how many were you, were, uh, how many teams were there when you guys started compared to the teams right now? We started with nine teams. 91. And, yeah. and, and, and then before we, uh, you know, we shut down to COVID, I think we still had like around 80 to 90 teams left. So, wow. You know, so hopefully, we get, hopefully, we'll, Sorry, from nine teams to 90, huh? Yeah, well, the peak time was actually, we, we were almost at 200. Wow. That was the peak we had. But then, you know, as uh, my friends got older, they stopped playing basketball. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, and then the video games come. So, well, the kids don't play basketball no more. They, they just play <laughs> video games. So, you know, we lost some uh, some kids there. Mm-hmm. But, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I just wanted to add, so when, when Don said uh, it wasn't organized, I remember we would wait like Thursday, Friday, and we still don't know what time our game is, if we have a game, so we couldn't really like plan our weekend. So that was, uh, that's what I remember when it was very not unorganized. Yeah, I didn't want to say that. <laughs> <laughs> so Nick, Nick's no longer here, right? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so in Dick, what, what Dick, Dick did not want to do, which I'm trying not to be like that, is go with the technology. Uh, when I started, the internet started coming up, you know. So I ended up doing the, you know, the um, website. And Dick did not want to do the website. He was all doing papers. So I said, hey, you know, I was the young guy. I wanted to do everything online and do everything um, to the internet. And that's why I said, even now, new leagues are coming up. And yeah. I need to keep up with those leagues to make sure that they don't leave me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's tough. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's part of business. Well, um, I know there's uh, there's kind of like um, a history. I know a little bit about it. And I wanted to kind of get some details from you. So um, when you started the league, right, it was basically us, our friends, and our family. And we yeah. kinda, um, started the league. But obviously, you're you are the Don, the Don Juan, the man. Um, but I remember, um, if you remember, uh, Vin Saldana, right? We got some younger guys. They brought some yeah. team, and then I noticed he actually. It looks like he branched out and he created his own like ABA league. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it, it happened. Then, a lot. 
And then the ABA league even branched out and there was like another hardwood ballers that came out of ABA. So yeah. I was wondering, do you know the, the history uh, of that? Well, just like, just like what I did, right? I left Dick Padron and then now it's happening to me, right? Pretty much a bunch of people in my league start forming their own league, you know, to, with their friends. So there's, you know, like ABA, hardwood league, there's superstar league, there's the hub. There's a lot of leagues out there. Even my referee started a league, uh, it's called Mofufu. There were a bunch of my referees, they started their own league in Monterey Park. So from small league, like all these different leagues running now, so that's why my numbers went from almost 200 to like maybe 80 now. So mm. it's, it's like, like, again, it's part of business. And, and then it, also uh, I noticed it went from um, Filipino, like you said, and Asian, and then now there's, it's more like open, right? Like, open, yeah. More diverse. Yeah. More, more, more diverse now. And uh, I don't know, not many Filipino kids are playing now. I don't see too many Filipino playing. I think they, I don't know. I'm not sure where they're playing anymore, but I don't see too many Filipino. Not, not like back when we were playing Noel. Mm -hmm. We would go from Nogales to LA. Oh, yeah. we, would, we would go everywhere just to play basketball. Mm -hmm. Now kids, they don't want to go outside their, their area. <laughs> yeah, I remember we would like travel to San Bernardino even, right? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was like back then was, we were hardcore. I think yeah. now they're not. You know, I mean, there's, there's other things they want to do than play basketball on a Sunday. Go you know to church. Well, <laughs> so church is the morning. So that, that was our <laughs> church. <laughs> I, don't think, exactly. I don't think that's the kids' priority. Yeah, <laughs> that's the parents' priority, not the kids. Yeah, but Don, um, is there a unifying tournament to like for let's say on let's say back rim versus other leagues? that uh, probably was conceptualized, you know, a unifying league. Well, Tournament. the problem with that is we all share players. Players are playing mm -hmm. in different the same league. So like, you know, um, this the good players are being picked to play wherever. And those guys mm -hmm. don't care. They're not paying. So they just jump from one team, from one league to another. You right. Know? right. So that's what they were doing back then or, or now, really. They just pick up players from left to right. So it's, it's hard to go league versus league because uh, we pretty much have the same guys. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I, remember, I remember. I remember one time I was playing like in, se in like seven days in a week. I was playing mm -hmm. like six days for like <laughs> six different teams because they wow. were just being, they were like, okay, we'll pay for your fees. Just play with us. So, yeah. Whatever. And that's what's and that's what's happening. And the guys don't care. They just want to play basketball. But I remember, um, so kind of what um, Mike was, um, I guess, alluding to is I remember there was also travel teams. I remember um, we would, I would, uh, so I was telling them that uh, we would play against Mark Kagiwa because remember uh, his, his actually his nephew is pretty good. Um, Don's nephew was on our team and, and then Mark goes in and then we would go against Mark Kagiwa's team. So I remember during the league, we would, I would go against Mark. But during, like, if we had a tournament that we would travel, then we would yeah. be all on the same team. So I yeah. remember that. Do you want to maybe talk a little bit about that? Yeah, like, like uh, when we travel, like, we've been to Frisco. I think went to Maui once, went to Oahu. We went to Seattle. I would pick the, you know, the, the good players or the elite players and travel and play other cities, you know. I mean, uh, yeah, other uh, thing. Because staying in L.A., we all know each other already. So we would travel and play those teams. So yeah, so it was really fun with Mark. Like I said, when Mark Gia, when I picked him up, he was only 15. He went mm -hmm. to Delano. Mm -hmm. I, oh yeah, I, I remember not, that Delano you know, was hot. <laughs> I did not want to pick him up because he was so young. And mm -hmm. everyone was telling me, pick him up, pick him up. He's, he's a different you know, player. So I did pick him up and he was the MVP in that tournament. He was only 15 or 16 then. Mm -hmm. And you, you could see he was special. Yeah. And we beat the team called Carson, the Labasan brothers. Yeah, the Labasan brothers. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, they were like they were dominating um uh Delano before. Yeah. Now uh, Delano was the biggest uh Filipino tournament. Everybody wanted to go there every summer, July. Mm -hmm. Filipino independence. It's always mm -hmm. end of July. That's mm -hmm. the biggest tournament back then. And that was the one to go to because they, they filled up the gym. 
Yeah. Everybody's watching. And, and and it's funny. I remember it's like the hottest. You know, they pick the hottest week of the year. <laughs> oh, it's because of Filipino Independence Day. Yeah, yeah. It's June end of summer. July. Yeah, so it was like we... the end of July. I remember, right? Yeah, I think end of July. Yeah. When is Filipino July. Independence Day? Like it's July. June twelfth. Just June twelfth. June twelfth. Yeah. 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 July. I remember, right? Yeah, they were yeah. doing July for some reason. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. yeah. So so Don, uh, I I know that or Noel knows to and even art that uh, the group has produced like uh, PBA pedigrees like Jimmy Alapan, Mark Agiwa, and I believe there's another one. Um, Noel. Asi Taulava. Asi yeah. yeah, we started. Yeah, we started with Asi and um, Jimmy and Big Lou and my nephew and Mark Bazoon. Mm -hmm. We went, uh, they went to, I didn't go, they went to the Philippines just to exhibition games and their blue, blue Laguna, blue something, blue detergent. So they picked up Aussie, you know, and uh, Big Lou came back. He wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. And my nephew and Jimmy, were, they, were too, they were still too young to play. So Aussie was the first one to go to the PBA. And then mm -hmm. after that was Jimmy, but Jimmy took forever because of paperwork. Yeah, I mean, because he, yeah. you know, because of his parents being uh, American citizen, it took a while for him to get dual. And That's I, what I believe, uh, and, but Mark was was easy because he he came from the Philippines, right? And then he came, yeah. So he was basically like going back. Yeah, so Mark he, was not. Uh, yeah, Mark wasn't that hard, but he wanted to finish college here first. I think he played two years here in Glendale City College. Yeah, he actually, yeah, he yeah. did play here in GCC. Yeah. 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 yeah, so, you know, so my biggest thing with these kids is at least finish college here before going back to the Philippines. Get your degree and then play in the Philippines. That's my uh, yeah. advice to most of the kids. Mm -hmm. You know, and right I now they're that, going, mm -hmm. right, right now they're being recruited to play high school over there and college over there. Mm -hmm. But um, that wasn't my, uh, my vision for these kids. Mm -hmm. You wanted them to finish college first and then go there. Yeah, yeah, play playing in the pro professional yeah. PBA. Yeah, but what what people felt like it's easier to get into PBA PBA if you go to high school and college there. It's an easier route, yeah. but that's a big sacrifice for the kids because it's hard to adjust mm -hmm. going to the Philippines, going to school, being a Phil Am. Mm -hmm. It's not that easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know yeah I, I mean? think. I think I think unless you have family, it makes it easier. But if you don't have family there, that's really hard. And the, and the maturity level too. You have to be really mature too. I mean, you're a high school mm -hmm. kid going over there. It's not the same as, you know, being here. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not that easy. It takes a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially and, really, yeah. and the problem is some of these kids are really not good enough to play in the PBA. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, they might go to college there, but they might, not, might, they might never make it. Mm -hmm. I mean, but if you play Division One, Division Two here, most likely you'll make it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. I mean. yeah. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong about my history with Jimmy Alapag. I think he was touted to be back then the next big thing by uh, the great Ron Jacobs, because I think he was recruited by Ron Jacobs to come over and play for the PBA. W yeah. Would you know anything about? Uh, Jimmy's recruitment history back then. Well, when he was when you know he, he Jimmy has a good resume. You know, what I mean, like I said, we took him there with with Asi. Jimmy was still young, so people liked him a lot. You know, mm -hmm. but the problem with Jimmy was his paperwork. So it took a while before he got his paperwork finished. But then they see, you know, of course, in the Philippines, they look at your height. So oh, he's only five seven, maybe. So. Mm -hmm. He his, I still remember his. He went all the way to number ten, picked overall. He did not make the uh, number one pick because of his height. And Jimmy did make that. Made, Jim, Jimmy made that statement that they'll they'll be sorry for not picking him up early. Mm -hmm. and, they, yeah. and and he did make them feel bad because he yep. he ended up dominating. You know, mm -hmm. making uh, Mighty Mouse and mm -hmm. uh, you know dominating the position. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, he was a legend now. There. Yeah. Yeah. Most of, yeah. most, of most of the coaches did like him, but only the problem is, you know, again, they looked at his height, which is, you know, yeah. not, you know, that's typical though, the Philippines. They're mm -hmm. looking for someone tall. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, their, their mentality <laughs> is, uh, we were just talking to a, a coach from the Philippines. Their mentality is, well, we got a lot of little guys in the Philippines, <laughs> so, so we're looking for height. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's what they look for is height. Yeah. So. Yeah, height is a premium. But, but there's guys like Mark, Jimmy. Mm -hmm. Alex, who are not that tall but could really play, because they, again, those guys play college ball here. Mm -hmm. I mean, they got the the, the fundamentals. You know what I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. So Denver, those guys. Well, Asi had the height, so he had no problem. That's why he was the. Well, oh, Asi had everything. He has the height. The uh, played college in Hawaii. I think he played D one or D D two maybe. So he had everything on him. I mean, that was not that was not a uh, issue with that with that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then uh, can you expand uh, on the um, on the leagues or the certain structures that you have inside your league? You know, the five, ten, and under. How how yeah. how is that organized? Yeah. Well, you know, like you know, just like typical, people complain about, hey, they're too tall, we have no height. <laughs> so I try to yeah. I, I try I try to adjust based on people's um, you know you know comments. So I said, okay, well. We could make five down under for this for this guy, so you know it's a faster game, and then and then we'll, okay we'll, we'll we'll do before it wasn't by height it was by gold, silver, bronze, you know copper, mm -hmm. but then people start bringing bigger guys in the copper division, so mm -hmm. like wait a minute that doesn't make sense you know what I mean mm -hmm. there's a six ten guy playing you know like like Noel's team picked up Big Lou. He's yeah, 6'9". <laughs> yeah, it's a 6'10 guy. <laughs> so we, can't, we can't leave him in the bronze division, so we have to play mm -hmm. out. So, you know what I mean? So, so I know it's okay, so let's do 5'10". I, I, I try to listen to the to yeah. the people, to the teams. Just right now, I'm not sure if Noel told you, I'm doing golf right now. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, yes. Just had my, I just had my second uh, tournament uh, Sunday. I started uh, in November. We had 40 eight teams and now and last sunday we had 72 teams i mean players sorry oh, golfer. Yeah. i'm still not into golf yet so, <laughs> golfer. And so now after the tournament they're all like saying hey we need to separate we need to have different division because some golfers are really good and some are not so now mm -hmm. i have to to find a way to make it more fair mm -hmm. it depends on the level more. now yeah mm -hmm. so now i have to uh who plays golf here i know did you play golf now no, I don't. They they want me to pick it up. So, uh, but I, I haven't played yet. Um, so I wanted to ask you something with golf. So, because you mentioned individuals versus team, do they play as a team? They play. They play as a team. Okay. But if you have the one good player, I mean, it's just it's different. I mean, it's just a, it's golf is different. <laughs> it's really like your boys. Uh, I think they came in last. Roy. Oh, they. Uh, oh my God. They came in last. See, that's why I'm not playing. <laughs> <laughs> there were some good golfers uh, showed up last Sunday. So now people are saying, "Hey, wait a minute, we need to create different division because those guys are really good." Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, I played. Oh my goodness, not even close. I mean, I'm I'm still a beginner though, but there are some really good golfers mm -hmm. out there. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean. Cool. So when when is your uh, next tournament? I do it monthly. So what oh, I do okay. now, I try to be created. So every month will be a different type of tournament. Uh, best ball. And then I'm going to try to do, I think I did a foursome. And then I might do uh, doubles next week, next month or singles. I, you know, I told the guys I'm going to take a week break and then figure this thing out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And the guy who I work with at the golf course named Art is also Filipino. And okay. he was telling me, man, this is really good. It's a good, um, no one really has has um, done it before. So it might be a good idea for me to uh, focus more, more because he's seeing a lot of younger guys, younger go golfers showing up. Mm -hmm. He said, usually the golfers are older. I said, well, the, well, now they're young because there's no place to go except golf. Yeah. <laughs> they can't play basketball. Right? Yeah, right now. So, so, um, so you have teams. So do they also, cause I know you, you have uniforms for the basketball teams and you also have a uniform, um, company that created the uniforms for us, yeah. uh, when we played, um, in the tournament. So is the golf because they're teams, do they also have to wear uniforms? No, they don't, but they were, but they were matching. Oh, okay. the, win the winner of the tournament was funny. They matched from hat 
to shoes. Same socks, same <laughs> belt, same shoes. I'm like, uh. they look good. And they played, and they yeah. played, they, they had to play good, <laughs> but they, they, had to play good. they did. They dominated the tournament. Oh. All of them so, really are mm -hmm. good golfers. And the guy there that played, the ca team captain is Carl Becerra. I'm not sure if you know him, Noel. Oh, I, I know Carl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he brought three good players with him, and they dominated the tournament. And Carl was with Pat Krim basketball back in 1991. Yeah, I remember him. Yeah. So because because of Instagram, we, we were able to connect. Yeah, and because of, because he follows Pat Krim basketball, he ended up uh, showing that I'm doing golf, so he joined the tournament. You know what's funny is I I, I saw. Um uh on the facebook there's uh one of the guys that we know um he's from up dexter you guys know dexter devera yes he's actually yeah. doing, he's kind of doing something what you're doing because he also had his own basketball league um now what he's doing is a golf tournament but it's but it's uh specific to the like the nca uap theme with the basketball it's like so they have uniforms and it's like La Salle versus Ateneo versus, uh, I don't know what CSA, they had like a CSA, is that Coleo? No, Coleo de San Agustin. Yeah, there you go. So they had CSA, La Salle, Ateneo. I didn't see a San Vera team on there. But um, so that was interesting that I, I, I kind of um, just noticed that. So maybe you might uh, want to do something like that. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's a tough one. That's, that's uh, a tough one. I remember when... Uh, when Paul does, I used to do the college tournament, La Salle, Ateneo. Uh -huh. He was recruiting guys that are not from La Salle. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's the when I saw that tournament, I saw some of my guys who did not go to La Salle, who did not go to the bank playing on those tournament. Like, are you guys really putting some rules here or what's going on? <laughs> So well, you know, know. Are are you you guys, it's uh, always going to happen. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know if I want to touch that. I don't uh, know. Okay. I, I see. I'll leave that to Dexter. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> uh, no, we just uh, need to uh, thank our sponsor, Top Digital Studio. It's a digital marketing agency. Go to topdigitalstudio.com to learn more about how video creatives are done right. And you can watch all episodes of this show every Friday at 4 p.m. at mybalitz.com. That's with a Z. And if you can like our page, show us some love, click on subscribe. The better expand, so please do show us some love. So, Don, about your um, uh, your uniform business. So, mm -hmm. how's that progressing? Well, right now we're slow because of you know uh, there's no sports going on. But um, before before COVID, we're doing a lot of football uniforms, a lot of basketball mm -hmm. and polo shirts, and you know right now masks, like I said, and PPE stuff. Mm -hmm. So whatever they want, we'll try to make, you know what I mean? Because we have good people in the Philippines. I still remember, you know, the Philippines, there's always a flood going on. And it was a, during a football season. And our people were carrying their sewing machine up, up above their head so wow. it won't get wet. Wow. Mm -hmm. and, they, and they still managed to able to meet the deadline. Yeah. You know, um, I mean, the people in the Philippines are very good workers. They're very committed. I mean, so yeah, I'm very happy with them. Yeah, that's good. Well, well maybe we can have a. We're we're just new here, but maybe we can have a uniform here, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You have to decide it first. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then Mike was thinking like we'll give a pro promo T-shirt away. So uh... <laughs> what do I do in my in my golf? I pretty much give my T-shirts. I mean, well, you know my league. I give away what maybe two hundred t-shirts a season, because that's my uh, advertising. That's my promo. It's pretty much my t-shirt stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how I, I get my name out there. So sometimes you'll, you know, you'll see people wearing it in the street or in the, even a Laker game. I saw someone wearing my my uh, t-shirt. Yeah, you know what I mean, can, yeah. that's how I advertise myself. Do you do you plan to uh, venture into other sports, Don? Football, well, right now, or is it already uh, ongoing? Um, I want to touch flag football a little bit too. Um, and, flag. Mm -hmm. Yeah, flag football and maybe try to do some tennis too. I mean, more outdoor stuff because now 
with basketball and the COVID now, you never know what's going to happen. So, you know I mean? So I'm trying to see what's, what, what does people want to do out there? I, I will venture out, you know, but right now I think with golf, it's keeping me busy. And when basketball comes back, that's going to be really busy, busier you know, with the uniform. So I'm going to need to slow down. <laughs> Well, um, so I wanted to ask you this question. Um, so from, from the, the business perspective, because I know, you know, way back then, I remember um, you were just kind of doing this on the side. You had a full-time job and then you just kind of mentioned it ballooned into, you know, being, being you know, your 100%, this is your business. Um, can you take us like to the business side and, and uh, how did that kind of work? Did you like start as a DBA and then you convert it to a, nonprofit or a corporation or, or if you can kind of just give us a little tidbit if you can give an advice to somebody that may be thinking oh well, how can I start a business or well something? that's funny because a lot of people have asked me about you know other leagues has asked me yeah. advice about how to run mm -hmm. the league and the main thing what I did was I, you're you're right I, I was working full-time and then basketball was a side job but when it kept growing at sometimes at work I'm doing backroom stuff you know what i mean i could not focus with my work anymore <laughs> so i still remember i brought you know remember henry yes of course henry yeah, yes so i brought henry in because i could not handle the workload i think one time i was in japan for a business trip and you know i had i needed help so henry stepped up and i made him a partner you know so with his help we, we grew you know what i mean so I end up, um, you know, having a family and a house and everything. I want to protect myself. So I'm, you know, so I made Pacrim a corporation. So make sure I don't get, you know, in trouble getting sued mm -hmm. and everything. Because, you know, people out there are looking for something to do, <laughs> you know, to do, to, you know, to take me down. So. Mm -hmm. I made myself a corporation and then, and that's my biggest advice. I have insurance. My biggest advice to people who wants to run the league or tournaments, make sure you guys are protected. Your personal assets are all protected. Mm -hmm. And most of them are not, to be honest with you. Most of this league out there, mm -hmm. are not a corporation. And that's scary. That's scary because if somebody decides to sue them, uh, can go after you. <laughs> to be really Their house bad. and everything. Yeah. And, and, and here's the thing too with the with being the league before they were really strict about gym rentals you have to have insurance most of the leagues right now they're going under the table with the coaches which is not very good mm -hmm. because you know there's no I, I mean I think I've been in business for so long because I did it in a way the right way I went to the city I went to the district so my games are always on you know on schedule. I don't cancel my game because there's other events on the calendar. Mm -hmm. So most of these guys, they go to the coach and the coach get fired. Then they go somewhere else. They look for another gym. There's no stability. I've been with uh, Franklin for how many years? Montebello and also uh, Seed of Mother Park. I've been with them for like 27 years, you know, mm -hmm. and always pay your bills because you know, because, because that's how uh, you maintain your, um, you know, your uh, relationship, yeah. relationship, you know, make sure everything's taken care of. Some of this league, which I heard, they'll, they'll take the money and then not pay the gym. And then they they ruin their relationship with the gym. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. But they don't, talk, they don't take it serious. They think it's just, you know, it's a quick cash. For me, it's a long term. That's why yeah. 29 years I've been doing it. And then I know there's also, um, so you were back in the, the day and even like uh, recently, you pretty much have um, the Los Angeles area. But I know there's also some leagues like um, they, they wanted me to play uh, recently in, in West Covina. I know there's leagues in Fontana. Um, yeah, the, yeah they're, all, they're all over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. have you heard of, um, um, I think you, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure you probably heard of this and you probably know them. Um, Tomakbo, Tomakbo League. I think I'm, if I'm saying that right. Yeah, George. George, yeah, yeah, George yeah. and I are good friends. He's from Orange okay. County. Okay. He did a league in, uh, but his league is like more like 35 and over, 45 and over. Okay. And he, yeah, he did his league in. Um, he's the one guy that also asked me for advice. 
So yeah, so he's in um, Anaheim. He was in Anaheim. So, uh -huh. and then he's doing a lot more like youth. And then he started trying to send people in the Philippines also. Okay. Yeah, I mean, and that's yeah. good. I mean, but that's their, you know, like I said, he's the, he, I think their group likes to send younger, younger guys to go to high school and college and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I've retired from that. That's a, it's not, it's not for me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you've it's, been there. It was, that, right? Yeah, it's tough. That was a tough one. I mean, I was going to the Philippines like almost every year to get my guys drafted, and there's so much uh, polit. It's, it's so political. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. So it's not, you know, <laughs> it's a tough business to get into yeah. because you can see a lot of kids who who thinks they're good enough, but really they're not. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I don't know. Uh, to me, you have to be honest with these kids that they're not good enough to be out there. And if you say that, they don't believe you. They think you just, you know, mm -hmm. lying. But my mom said, you know, I was like the best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, there, there's so many good players in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, you could dominate here, but if you don't, you know, if you're, if, if you don't play college here, most likely you can't play in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. yeah, and it's a different game there. It's it's actually a lot more physical. Than, than it's more physical and very political. Yeah. You can't mess around. I mean, one bad one bad uh, thing about you, they they'll send you home with no, with with nothing. They won't mm -hmm. hesitate to send you home. Mm -hmm. It's a business. Mm -hmm. I mean, so uh, what do you know what's up with uh, Jimmy? Is he here? Is he in the Philippines? Uh, Jimmy's here, actually. In China. Here? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So he's retired okay. and now he's trying to get into the NBA. You know, he coached in the summer uh, summer league summer in league? Las Vegas. Was it for Sacramento? For, yeah, for Sacramento. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he's here in Chino and he said with the COVID stuff, it was best for him to be here. Okay. Yeah, I mean, so he's in Chino doing some training right now. And hopefully he'll get into the, hopefully he'll get into the um, NBA. Yeah, and then and we were looking at that picture earlier with uh, you had Jimmy Alapag and Alex Kabagnot on that that uh, one team. Uh, yeah. What about uh, I know Alex is still playing in, in uh, the Philippines. Yeah. Um, Mark's still playing. I mean, okay. yeah, Mark's still playing. I think Jay Washington's Jay Wash still playing. Um, yeah, Wash still playing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, Jay Washington. He's still oh, playing. Oh, Jay, Jay Washington, yeah. Yeah, he's still okay. playing, and um, I think Rob Reyes went back to Florida, and Denver Lopez stopped after a couple of years. Oh, so, I remember but, Denver. Yeah, mm -hmm. so all those guys. I think only Mark and um, I think uh, Mercado is still playing. Salomon Mercado is still playing. Okay. So mm -hmm. All those guys, uh, you know, I worked with them before. Mm -hmm. But now I'm, you know, like I'll, I'll still give advice, you know uh -huh. what I mean? But I'm not going to, you know, uh, send anybody out there anymore. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, because of the dynamics of the uh, business. Yeah, it was tough. Like I said, when I, when I was there and trying to negotiate their salary, it, it was tough. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Because, you know, they want to give this much and we want more. And it's really hard to play a uh, hardball uh, in the Philippines. You can't. I mean, and then, and then, I'm not sure about now, but back then, the agent don't get paid by the, by the team. You, you have to collect from your players. And that was oh, tough okay. for me trying to collect from the players. Like, you know, hey, that say Lakers pay me, why am I gonna collect from LeBron, right? <laughs> so it was tougher for me to get it from the kids who just got, you know, and it's, it's not like a lot, you know, they don't get, mm -hmm. they don't make much in the beginning. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I'm not sure about now, but back then, you know, it wasn't much for them to live off. Mm -hmm. Have uh, any of the uh, teams back in the motherland have contacted you for any more info lately? Not people have, have like, contacted me. They said, "Oh, they know, they know this. They know people there." That, I mean, you know, like you know, like oh, I'm with this team now. I'm with, like, you know, yeah. They 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 reached out, 
but they reach out to everybody. With the internet now, it's really easier to find good players. Right now, you got Tomakbo, you have Phil Amselak. Mm -hmm. They're all like, all these guys are the one recruiting to take kids to Philippines. So how do you see this? Uh, since you're doing golf now, um, you kind of mentioned it's it's growing. Do you see it um, continue to grow? Even let's say if things kind of sort of get back to normal. Yeah, and I think I, I think golf is really uh, it's very popular. Not just you know even before me, before I start doing this, it's just really popular. Even for me, I can't get a tee time on a weekend. Like mm -hmm. I said, if you guys play golf. To play golf will cost at least a hundred bucks to play on one day. I mean, that's just rude. No. It's not. It's not very. It's not a cheap sport. Okay. You know what I mean, so in hard, it's hard to get a tee time on the weekend. Right? What's that? You need the clubs, right? You yeah, and those things are very expensive. Yeah, the equipment. And, yeah. Yeah, and to get tee time, it's ridiculous. In the good golf course, if you don't book it a week in advance, you won't get any tee time. So yeah, so for me to host a tournament, it's just really, you know, it's 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 kind of like it's it's good for them because they could get to go out on a weekend mm -hmm. for four or five hours. Yeah. Play golf takes four or five hours, just to let you guys know. It's like a weekend warrior type thing, right? Yeah, that's all day. I mean, you know, you better <laughs> have a patient wife to do that <laughs> <laughs> because you're gone the whole day. So definitely basketball is on hold right now. So golf is the uh, sport. Yeah, yeah. Into. So like now, like I said, I'm mm -hmm. not sure if you guys are on Instagram. I know you guys are Facebook, right? But in, in, I think since like Instagram is, I get more followers and more, uh, I, I, I tend to get, I, I reach out more on Instagram than Facebook, it seems like it. Uh, I'm, in, I'm in Instagram more, uh -huh. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think since, like the... The younger generation are more in Instagram, right? They are. Well, yeah. of course not TikTok, but I'm not going there. Yeah. You don't want to show your TikTok. <laughs> yeah, that's different. So Instagram, I think it's a little bit better for me right now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. That's where I post all my pictures. And by by being active with golf, people from basketball know that I'm still around. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? That hey, you know, yeah. Don's still around. We're not doing anything. And uh, someone reached out to me, say, hey, there's people playing basketball. Why don't I do it? First of all, I'm not going to take that chance. Yeah. You know I mean, yeah. if someone gets COVID during my league, mm -hmm. then, then I will really feel bad. <laughs> so I would rather not touch that right now. Yeah, I'm going to go with whatever our country said. Say, don't play basketball. We don't play basketball. Yeah. I mean, if they said don't play golf, I won't play golf either. So I'll follow whatever the rules, the guideline is. Yeah. Well, that that's part of what you were talking about earlier, right? The the liability issue. You don't want, uh, you know, you don't want. I guess to... I, I guess I'm old. You know, some of, some of these young guys, they don't they don't care. Yeah. Well, they're <laughs> yeah. trying to make that that buck, right? That, that, yeah. They're trying to make that money that you already made. So that's. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe I don't know, but it's not worth it to me. Yeah, get insurance and be be incorporate incorporate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> get, get that incorporated. And uh, yeah. I always tell people, try to do it the right way. Mm. I mean, that's the only way. Yeah, actually, go ahead. Oh, actually, uh, in the San Bed alumni, we did this uh, with some of the alumni like, well, way back in 2007. Uh, we had, uh, you know, just a tournament for um, the alumni. We had like 14 teams. And then uh, the gym didn't really require us to have an insurance but we still you know we still got it well actually they did i'm sorry they did but uh we we almost forgot it to get the insurance but and then at the same day we got it because you know just to make sure and during the tournament there was a there was a, an accident a big accident where we had to call in the uh, an ambulance <laughs> wow. it's a good thing we had you know you always have sure. to protect yourself because you never know you never know yeah yeah and like I said, most gyms require that. So yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah, because mm -hmm. they, you know, if if not me, they'll go after the gym. If someone gets hurt, they could sue mm -hmm. the gym. Yeah. That's why they want to protect themselves because the you know, the city has more money than me, of course. So you know mm -hmm. what I mean. So <laughs> you might, might as well go after the gym, not me. That's uh, why. A lot, times, a lot of times they'll have the players sign waivers, right? So they're kind of still waivers, even with waivers. Yeah, waivers not really, yeah. you know. If they low, 
if they get a lawyer and they, <laughs> they over they uh, a, a lawyer waiver is out the window yeah <laughs> gonna try it's to good like... <laughs> yeah it's good to have a waiver but you also need insurance and you mm -hmm. know you know or c corp or or s corp or yeah. whatever you want you know mm -hmm. you need to protect yourself yeah that's my advice it'll cost money yeah. to be a corporation but you could sleep better that way yeah that's right mm -hmm. good advice <laughs> and I think Noah and I talked about that before. Yes, when you, I remember when, you, you did, yeah. when you did your tournament, I said mm -hmm. make sure you have insurance. Yeah. yeah. I always tell people that. Yeah. Well, uh, luckily, yeah, when we did it, they actually required it. So mm -hmm. yeah. it was one of the yeah. first things they asked for. Well, if mm -hmm. you ever do a tournament, not, don't deal with the coach. You have to deal with the, the district or the, you know, do everything in papers because mm -hmm. you don't want to host a tournament, get 20, 30 teams, and gets canceled last minute. That's the worst. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, that's what I did. So I actually dealt with it was a, um, you know, it was a lot more paperwork and everything because everything was formal. But I basically dealt with um, Cal State Dominguez Hills. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Deal with them because especially tournaments. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't want teams coming from all over and get canceled. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that that'll be bad. Yeah, you're not gonna be not, not good for business. They might sue you. Too. They might still sue you for the cash. <laughs> so Don, uh, yeah, thank you for your time and thank you for joining us. We really oh, enjoyed you. your 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 yeah. yeah your time and your input, uh, especially uh, going through the your adventures through uh, back then. Uh, I mean, since 1991, it's been. Uh, yeah color for years it's Good just fun. too bad that uh, the situation would yeah it's just temporary but i'm sure back room would be back yeah i mean well yeah, i back. wanted to i wanted to ask you this so when, on the tournament so i actually are you actually there at the tournaments and do you actually play on your own tournaments or uh, i used to, i i used to play when i was younger but then uh you know um or golf or basketball no you know i'm talking about the golf the golf golf uh the first tournament i played half because you know i want to make sure everything runs smooth mm -hmm. uh -huh. and then this last tournament i did play but it's hard to play because you know i got two two different phone calls you know what i mean mm -hmm. like hey you know it's kind of slow what's going on mm -hmm. hey um <laughs> you know because we, we give award for longest drive, closest to the pin. So people were, were, was inquiring it. Yeah, I did play, but I'm still a beginner. So um, maybe next time I won't play because I think it'll run better if I, didn't, if I don't play. Right. But, but um, so so the next one, let's say you, you don't play, but you're still going to be out there. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely, okay. definitely. You know, like with Pac Rim, when we started, uh -huh. I was there for like, you know, good, what, 20 what, maybe 15 years I was there mm -hmm. and I'll be there in the beginning and then you know at the end when we grew I can't be in five different locations in basketball because we have I'm not sure if Noel told you we have Glendale we have West Covina we have Monterey Park so I can't be in all the gyms mm -hmm. you know I'll show up drop off some paperwork and then leave and go to mm -hmm. another gym you know I mean but yeah f to start a business I have to be there yeah that's that's very important. Just to just to get it going, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's what I was asking. No, if I have three different so, so golf in one of your future playing, tournaments, then I can't be in all those different golf courses. <laughs> <laughs> so in one of your future tournaments, you're gonna have um, the locker room team on your golf team, and we're gonna wear uniforms. That's good. Them. That's good. <laughs> and, and the thing about golf is age doesn't matter. Mm. Yeah, so right. those young guys cannot beat us because <laughs> right yeah. now the older guys are the one winning. Mm. You know what I mean? We yeah. don't need to run and chase those kids. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can still use those hips. You know, yeah. for, something else, right? for golf. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So no, definitely, definitely. I mean, um, I you know, I I don't see us basketball. I don't see basketball coming back till maybe uh, July. 2015, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. 21, I think. Yeah. Well, it's a long time before uh, we get back to it. Yeah, yeah I yeah. think when uh, the, uh, everybody has a vaccine, uh, can get a vaccine, that's probably when it'll come back. That's the only way, yeah, uh, we'll be back, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Don, in uh, behalf of Noel, Art, myself, and our sponsor, Top Digital Studio, we'd like to thank you for your time. Uh, it was uh, great having, to see you. Thanks for having me. 
Yeah. All right. Thanks, Dan. Good to see you again. Thank you. All right. Take care, guys. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.